Welcome to Sound Sleuth Classroom. Shh, class is starting. Today's topic, soldering simplified. There are three factors that will lead to success when soldering. Cleanliness, heat, and movement. On the cleanliness side, we want to make sure our printed circuit boards are clean, the components are clean, and typically if they're brand new, this is not an issue. But sometimes if you have older components, like I do here, we want to clean them off with a little isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel. Same thing with the circuit boards. Just a quick wipe down with isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel and you should be good to go. Heat. So here's how soldering works. The liquid solder flows by wetting action between the two components that we're soldering together. So both of those components have to be above the temperature that solder melts for the liquid to flow properly. Movement. This is the third factor for success of soldering, or actually lack of movement. We want to make sure everything is stationary while the solder cools and solidifies, and then we'll have a really strong solder joint. All right, let's go look at some common scenarios that you might encounter while soldering. And once again, this is intended for the DIYer, a hobbyist, or even an electrical engineer that only solders every once in a while. These are the most common things that I could think of that we would do currently. Cleanliness. We talked about it for the printed circuit board and the components, but actual cleanliness of the soldering iron tip, keeping that clean is really important to make this whole thing work. So every time you go to use the soldering iron, you want to wipe the tip off on a damp paper towel or a damp sponge, and they actually make sponges intended for this. And what that does is a quick burst of steam cleans off any oxide layer at the tip of the soldering iron and it removes any old solder. Okay, in our first example, we're going to see how not to do it. This looks like we're doing everything right, but what's going on here is the soldering iron is in contact with the lead to be soldered, but not the printed circuit board. So the lead heats up, but the printed circuit board doesn't get any heat applied to it, resulting in the blob on the lead and not a clean solder joint. So let's look how to do it correctly. So we tin the tip of the soldering iron, and then we go in with that little blob of solder on the tip of the soldering iron and make sure it's in physical contact with both the printed circuit board pad and the component lead that we want to solder. Let it get warm, flow a little bit of solder on, and then we step back and it solidifies. Here's what it looks like from above the normal first person point of view. And it's really hard to see with modern circuit boards with the pad sizes they have, whether you're in contact with it or not. Let's look at the second component lead as we get them, this one soldered in. So once again, tin the soldering iron, go in, get some solder to flow through both pieces of metal, pull the soldering iron off, let it solidify and cool, and you're good to go. This is a 9-volt battery lead being connected as the power supply lead coming into a little circuit board. Heat the component up, the lead, and the circuit board pad, get the solder to flow, and there we go, that one's connected. Okay, this is a side view of the same scenario. This is 22 gauge wire going into a circuit board pad. And this one's taking a little bit longer to heat up and you can kind of see that we don't get solder flow to the pad until it's hot enough for the solder to melt. And then there you go, watch it solidify, we're good to go. Next up, we're gonna tin a wire. This is really useful to do before you bend a wire and put it onto a lug. So we'll start at the top, tin, you know, get a little bit of blob on the soldering iron, touch the blob to the wire, and then once you get heat, just flow the whole thing down and you're done. Pull it away. My instructors back in the Navy days, they would have loved this one. This one came out perfect. Check that bad boy out. Okay, our second wire here is not as clean as the first one. So when we first start soldering on it, notice that it doesn't flow really well. What we need to go back is heat it back up and the flux in the center will actually clean the conductors better and the solder will flow on them. And then once again, the wire is now tinned, ready to connect to something. Up next, our 3.5 millimeter jack. This is a classic one, almost everyone needs to solder at some point. So what we're gonna do is get the uh, soldering iron tinned here with a little ball, of a blob of solder. We're gonna go on the back of the cup, heat that up, flow some solder into it. Second terminal here, we're just gonna heat up and tin, and we're not gonna do anything with a sleeve connection, and you'll see why as we connect our wire. Okay, I've already pre-tinned and pulled the shield back of the wire we're gonna connect to the 3.5 millimeter jack. So now we just have to kind of heat the cup up, melt, melt it, get the solder flowing in liquid, and then just insert the wire and we're good to go. For the second connection, we needed to hold it up against the side. Both it is tinned and our terminal is tinned. 
So we just have to melt it and get the heat to melt the wire solder as well, and it will all flow together. All right, there we go. Let it cool before you move it. Now for the shield part, we're going to wrap that around. I'm going to come in, tin the soldering iron, touch the melted solder to both pieces of metal, and get it to flow. Notice it only flows on the braid first, and then when the metal of the connector gets hot enough for the solder to melt, it flows around both, creating a perfect solder joint. And there we go. All right, these are speaker leads, and we're going to solder 18-gauge wire onto it. 18 gauge wire is thicker, which means there's more metal, which means we more, need more heat initially to get everything hot enough to solder for the solder to flow. And in this case, I'm gonna actually hold this in place, one of those alligator clip clamp kind of things so that nothing moves. Now we tin the soldering iron, come up, touch solder to the end of it, touch our joint. And notice it takes a little bit longer for this 18 gauge wire to heat up to the point that the solder melts. And then once it does, we get even solder flow, but we don't have any of the other side yet. Solder takes a little bit longer to flow in there. All right, now we pull it off. Now watch this cool and solidify. All right, let's do the other side. This is obviously the negative terminal with a black wire. Once again, it's an 18 gauge wire. This time the solder uh, iron's gonna heat up the terminal a little bit more before the wire, so you'll see when the wire starts to flow with the solder on it, flows up the other side, then we pull the soldering iron off. Whole thing solidifies and cools, just like Game of Thrones. Solder removal. You're gonna have to do this sometimes. Solder must be liquid, the removal must be fast, and then what happens if you clog a pad on the circuit board? I don't know, I've never done that one. Here's our new best friend, a solder sucker. Spring-loaded reverse like hypodermic syringe thing, press the button, spring pops up, sucks out the solder. This is what it looks like when you first do it. Here's a close-up view. Once again, I'm gonna heat the component and the pad lead up and then bring the tip on, press the button, and it sucks it all out. Now there's still a little bit of thin film of solder holding the components in, so you're gonna have to kind of warm them up from the edges with a soldering iron and then slowly pull them out. What happens if you accidentally fill a pad with solder pulling out a component? This is gonna actually sound a little counterintuitive. We wanna actually put a little more solder on the pad and then come in from the other side of the pad with a soldering iron, heat it up until we get the solder to be liquid and, and uh, molten. And then we come in with a solder sucker right on top of that bad boy, press the button and sucks it all out. Boom, done, nice little clean pad. All right, now let's move on to surface mount components. Here we are with a close-up view of the circuit board with two pads. We need to get a little bit of solder paste on each of the pads. And notice this looks really horrible, but it's, it's gonna work. Trust me. So now we bring in our surface mount resistor. Once again, these things are tiny. So these are really tiny tweezers, but that looks like it's huge going on there. Once again, that does not look pretty. Notice when we start heating up with the air, it just starts moving around as the flux melts and flows. So now we're gonna hold in place with the tweezers and then now when the solder melts with the airflow, ooh, that looks bad. But believe it or not, this whole thing is gonna clean up and work just fine. So now the solder solidifies and cools. We're gonna bring on a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to clean the whole thing up. Got a little brush action going there, cleaning away the solder residue or the flux residue and the little tiny solder balls that drifted off. All right. There we go. It's actually a really well done solder joint, even though it might have looked clunky going together. So here's what it looks like from the top. And then these other two ones were already made in a machine, so they were production ones. And my uh, hand solder joint doesn't look too different. Here's a second example, already placed. And once again, as it melts with the airflow above it, um, it's gonna start drifting around. There we go, the solder's melting again. Bring in my uh, tip in a little closer. But once again, the Kind of the surface tension of the liquid solder just brings the component right into the pads and we're good to go. Here's a little bit closer up shot of it after it's been um, cooled and just kind of looking around it. All right, now what if you need to remove a surface mount component? That's easy. Grab our little uh, hot reflow gun, get some tweezers to hold on the component, bring the reflow gun above it, heat the circuit board in the component, and then once the solder becomes liquid, just grab that resistor and pull it right off. It's actually easier to do than uh, through hole components.
Now that was actually a larger surface mount component. This is an ESP32 with a zero ohm jumper that we're gonna have to move if we wanna use the external antenna versus the little wire PCB trace internal antenna. So we heated that one up and in my case, it actually blew away and I had to find it later. After I found it, put some solder paste down, dropped them back in place, came in with a hot air reflow gun and just kind of got it up. You can't see it from here, but I'm trying to point it away from the metal um, of the SP RF shield. There we go, the solder melts, forms a little uh, solder ball in the end because I used probably a little too much, solidifies and we are done. Okay, so this was soldering simplified. Once again, let's go over the three concepts you need to get down. Heat, both pieces of metal have to be above the melting point of solder for the solder to flow correctly. Everything has to be clean. When you're done, you wanna clean the flux off. If it's a sensitive circuit, you wanna clean it off anyway. And then prior to soldering, if it's an older component or even it's brand new, just brush it off with some isopropyl alcohol. You should be good to go. And then the final piece, make sure nothing moves while the solder cools down, solidifies, and do that, and you will be successful in soldering. And thank you for watching the first episode of Sound Sleuth Classroom. Mm -hmm.